recording in progress. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the briefing for Sunday, the 17th of March. Okay, the chart today, I've put on here the overnight one. Um, really, it, it looks like whoever drew this up last night just had a new set of crowns that they were playing around with. They've got high pressure over the continent here uh, and low pressure over the Atlantic. And we're sort of in between the two here with a whole load of fronts. Uh, yesterday, we had a warm front approaching and then passing through overnight uh, th throughout the evening and into the early hours. And uh, moving across to midday today, they've painted this. So a cold front uh, to the east of us, so possibly going through at the moment, with an occlusion just behind it. A very short occlusion, so whether or not that's a particularly strong feature or not is hard to tell. But basically, we've got one of or both of these fronts over the top of us at the moment, which is bringing all this rain and low cloud. But once it passes through, it should be quite a lot nicer. You see the isobars, not overly tightly packed. We have still got a fair breeze, generally from the west-southwest. And as this passes through, as these isobars bend around, it's going to become more west later into the afternoon. Continuing on then tomorrow, similar picture with high pressure just over the continent. And we should be clear of any frontal activity with a similar breeze from the southwest by the looks of it. And Tuesday, I uh, don't quite know what's going on there, but it depends on the positioning of that warm front. Um, and that will decide whether or not we get a day out of it. Okay, uh, winds, it's showing towards the centre of the country, more southwesterly, 230 at 20 knots. Towards the south coast, a little bit more west, so 260 at 25 knots. So there's a fair breeze at height today. Sat pick, you can see lots of cloud and showers are area at the moment, and you can see the back end of those fronts out to the west and southwest. Uh, you see a clearance slowly on the way. Rainfall radar then, unsurprisingly, you can see quite a lot at the moment. Looks like we're towards the back end of this uh, front already. Looking at the forecast. Yeah, it looks like it's going to stop raining pretty soon. We are then going to be left in a very damp air mass, which could be that occlusion coming through. Either way, it needs to dry out a bit. And going into the afternoon, once cloud base lifts, it looks like a very small chance of a shower coming through. It's probably just quite unstable air still. Uh, as we go later into the afternoon, it continues to dry out and it looks pretty good. Public forecast then showing showers for the next hour and then fog and then lifting to sunny intervals in the afternoon. Uh, temperature getting up to 13 degrees and you see that, west, uh, that wind starting from the south and becoming more west as the day goes on. Notice humidity very high this morning, not getting down to something sensible to at least 12 to 1 p.m. You see it gets down to 85% or so. So it looks like that's about the point it will get flyable around about lunchtime or just after. So at midday, looks like we'll have about 13 degrees with dew points around 11, so quite close there. Go forward a couple of hours to 3 p.m. 13, potentially 14 degrees with dew points ever so slightly less, 9 or 10 degrees. You can see it's better out to the west, 8, 9, uh, out to the east, it's more like 10. So the further this front moves, the more it's going to dry out and the better picture we should have. That's the view outside, obviously. It's not particularly good at the moment. Currently 11 degrees, dew points of 9. Odium, haven't issued a tap as the weekend, but otherwise humidity 100%, light rain at the moment, and overcast at 400 feet. Farnborough's forecast then, just give it a refresh. I haven't updated it for an hour. Eight knots of wind from the south. They're showing here all day scattered at 800, broken at 2000. I don't think we'll have the 800 all day. This morning, up until 1 p.m., they've put broken at 800, light rain and drizzle, and then a prop 40 for the first couple of hours of rain and drizzle. They're coming from 11 to 1. 10 knots from the west southwest. They're not really forecasting very far into the afternoon, but they they seem convinced it's not going to be very good in the morning. Top meteor then, this is 10 a.m., not looking great. Going across to midday, you see it is drying it out, out a little bit. Cloud base lifting to above a thousand feet. Still some bits of drizzle around. 
as we go into the afternoon, they are showing quite a lot of drizzle to be lingering around, but at least that cloud is a bit higher. And it is generally an improving picture. By 4 p.m., it is opened out a little bit more, but still the chance of some lower cloud and some drizzle around. Okay, no TAMs, there's nothing to worry about. Okay, operationally, we're most likely going to set up on 2-3. The wind is somewhere between the two, uh, but I think it's favouring 2-3, certainly to begin with. So launch point in the normal positions, cables running down the edge of the runway as normal, and I can almost be sure it's going to be very wet out there. So we'll start off with circuits onto the main runway. So that will be left-hand circuits onto the main runway. You can land on the grass if you want to, but the whole point is we're trying to avoid it. Right-hand circuits will be in a direction of 2-3 as normal. So it's a standard landing on the runway setup for 2-3. Left-hand circuits onto 2-7 hard, and make sure you're stopping by here well before the launch point. Right-hand circuits onto 2-3. Do try and keep the gliders on the tarmac if you can. Uh, if you do happen to land on the grass, please do not use the wheel brake. As for towing out, uh, we'll go directly out to the runway and then along to two, three to minimize the use of the grass. Okay, we've got three K21s, seven, seven, four, five, and eight. Uh, with Fuzz aware, we've got all three K13, C, S, and Hotel. Uh, just the one baby grub, but all three discuses. Okay, hopefully you've all read the ground handling guidance by now. If not, this morning is your perfect opportunity. And the other thing that I'm just trialing is sticking the ground radios in the buggies just for a little bit of situational awareness for the buggy drivers and also so we can contact you if need be. Uh, a couple of things with that. Just to begin with, leave the radios in the glove box. It's not ideal because you can't hear them that well. I'd like to get mounts if we go ahead with this. Uh, but for now, just leave them in the glove box so they don't get lost. Uh, please only use when essential. So remember, we're launching using the frequency. So only talk really if you're called or if it's absolutely essential. And listen for either the number of the buggy you're driving or the glider you're towing. If we know which buggy you're driving and we need to call you we can um but if we can't see then we can usually tell which glider you're telling and we can call you by that um just something i'm trying um we'll see how we get on if it doesn't work we won't carry on with it okay as possible king air at some point today potentially a, a two movements they've been quite vague and i haven't received any flight plans and they said it might be cancelled so i doubt um and as i mentioned earlier please don't use the wheel brakes Okay, we'll see what we can get out of the day. Hopefully, we'll be getting the toys out about midday. I'll see you out there. Bye for now.